Whether in movies, shows, or random clips on TikTok, we've all heard in some form or another the type of noises that dinosaurs would have been able to produce. But what did they truly sound like? G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you a video on the types of vocalizations that dinosaurs may have produced. Now, I'm sure it's not surprising that a majority of media forms don't get the types of sounds that dinosaurs would have produced too accurately, but you can't necessarily blame them too much for that, as back in the day there was quite limited knowledge on the subject. I mean, even now it's a topic of debate which requires further research. However, we've known for quite a while now that how the Jurassic Park franchise features these dinosaurs is, well, very wrong. We know that theropods didn't just walk around and roar loudly and all that type of stuff. Instead, it's far more likely that the sounds that dinosaurs made were more alike to birds and reptiles, which is what often is used for more accurate portrayals as they are all part of the archosaur group. But then again, it depends on the dinosaur. It seems that the larger dinosaurs, including megatheropods and sauropods, would have made noises that were a mix of crocodilian, elephant, possibly even whale-like, this being a combination of low frequency sounds. Some, such as curator of paleontology of the Museum of Mexico, Tom Williamson, suggest that these low frequencies could assist in penetrating the deep undergrowth of a forest. Now, just a quick thing to correct before we move on, on a lot of platforms there will be a bunch of different dinosaurs depicted and their sounds, and unless they're from a reliable source, then don't just blindly use them. A majority of them will just grab a bird such as a loon bird and slow down their vocalization in order to get the distorted prehistoric feel. Now, as cool as they sound, there is the issue that they aren't backed by an organization such as the BBC to make an accurate documentary, nor research by paleontologists. Bear in mind that even backed and researched areas of dinosaur vocalizations aren't 100% accurate, so just take everything with a grain of salt. Though I won't bag on them too badly, as to be fair, at least they're utilizing the most closely related ancestors around today, and hence you can argue that they are close in emulating the correct sounds of these prehistoric animals. But alright, we've got three contestants today which we'll go through. This includes the tyrant lizard king, the Tyrannosaurus rex, the knee crested lizard Parasolophus, and finally the plank lizard Pinacosaurus. Let's get into it. A dinosaur that most people really want to know what it truly sounded like would undoubtedly have to be the Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, in Jurassic Park, they had used a mix of different animals, including a baby elephant's squeal, an alligator's gurgling, as well as a tiger's snarl. They also utilized a whale's blowhole in order to recreate the Tyrannosaurus breaths. This, of course, made the Tyrannosaur iconic. Where you heard a dinosaur roaring, I'd bet you five pennies that it was Rex's. However, looking at more recent and supported emulations of the Tyrannosaur's vocalizations, it definitely seems to have that that lower frequency touch to it. When you think about it, it isn't surprising. I mean, Jurassic Park used a big cat as part of the T-Rex's rule. Tyrannosaurs don't have much in common with a tiger. It's better to compare the rex to its closest living ancestors as well as other large animals in order to try get an understanding of the type of noises it would have made. No, that's not all the research, there's definitely a lot more to it. This means Tyrannosaurus rex would have likely produced low-pitched, closed-mouth rumbles, meaning that there was no need for it to have open mouth overly exaggerated roars. Documentaries such as the BBC's The Real T-Rex with Chris Packersom, who is a naturalist, as well as separate studies from paleontologist Julia Clark, point to the Tyrannosaur indeed producing a lower frequency noise. Certain emulations use different subjects, for example, some use emus, ostriches, American alligators, etc. And if you wondered what the Tyrannosaurus rex sounded like, well, this is an example from the real T-Rex with Chris Packerson documentary, where they used the mixed audio of a Eurasian bittern and a Chinese crocodile, before sizing it up for an 8-ton Tyrannosaur. Then tell me you wouldn't be shook by this if you felt this sound before you even heard it. I would argue that this would be far more terrifying than the simple JP T-Rex roar. There is an unsettling power behind it that your body registers the danger before your ears. Moving on, one dinosaur that we're fairly confident about has to go to the parasaur. This is because in 1995, paleontologists discovered a parasaur skull that was in good condition. A few years after, a CT scan allowed for a 3D model to be created, and from there they were able to emulate what this hadrosaur would have sounded like if air passed through the passages within its prominent crest. And the results from this emulation sounded like this. <laughs> say that there is an inherent beauty to recreations like this. Imagine you're just in the Mesozoic period, chilling by a river, 
you see a parasaur on the other side, and then you hear it making these noises. But before you get into the simulation too much, it is crucial to acknowledge that the reconstruction does not consider potential soft tissue structures within the crest and nasal passageway, which could have influenced the airflow speed throughout the crest and consequently the noises that could have been produced. This is more of an estimation, albeit more accurate, than a definitive representation. But moving on, there's also been the recent, and might I add, very rare discovery of a larynx from the Pinacosaurus. Despite being a two-ton armored ankylosaurid, it turns out that it likely made chirping noises. Paleontologist Yoshida stated that the larynx discovered was kinetic and large, similar to that of birds which can make a variety of sounds. To explore this dinosaur's potential vocalizations, researchers examined the fossilized larynx parts, comparing them to living birds and reptiles. They discovered that it had a significant cricoid and elongated bones for adjusting its voice box size, suggesting it could have produced a variety of sounds, including rumbles, grunts, roars, and perhaps even chirps, which would have been capable of traveling long distances. Nevertheless, it's improbable that an ankylosaur produced chirps or wombles akin to contemporary birds, primarily due to their large size and distinct vocal mechanisms. Also, it's important to mention that birds use their syrinx to vocalize rather than their larynx. Not only this, but since it's a two-ton animal, imagine just how much larger its larynx would be in comparison, which is why researchers mention that their upcoming investigations will concentrate on refining the potential vocalizations of said dinosaur. They also aim to identify additional specimens that might preserve other larynxes or even a syrinx. So who knows, if it was more like a bird, it may have produced sounds something like this. Though, as British paleontologist Mark Whitton stated, there are multiple interpretations of how dinosaurs produce sound. Despite not being closely related to them, this team interpreted that its vocalizations were more akin to birds. Whether they actually produce noise through the larynx like most animals or through their syrinx like birds, the lacking evidence of when the syrinx appeared makes things a lot more difficult. Either way, this discovery places complex vocalizations for dinosaurs back into the spotlight, which is always a good thing. It's kind of crazy to think a two-ton animal would make chirping noises, but I'd say it's far more interesting than what we had originally thought. But what do you think? Do you prefer the depictions in Jurassic Park, or do you prefer the latest research that suggests that there was a wide variety of noises from deep frequencies to chirping to however you describe the parasaur? Let me know in the comments below. Now just before we wrap up, it's always important to note the study of dinosaur vocalizations is an ever-progressing field. What's deemed accurate and reliable one year could be seen as inaccurate the next. But hopefully in the near future, we will complete the puzzle of what these extinct creatures sound like. But with that, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you all enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.